when God, these men needed something special. They needed this special anointing. And let's go and look at some examples. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6 through verse 8. Acts chapter 3. Verse 6 through verse 8. And when you get it, someone got it. If you have a microphone, I want you to read it. Acts uh, chapter 6 and verse chapter 3 and verse 6 through 8. I need the mic. All right. Then Peter said. Then Peter said. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I do not have. I do not have. But what I do have. But what I do have. I give you. I'll give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of in, Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. Uh huh. And he took him by the right hand. And lifted him up. And lifted him up. And immediately. And immediately. His feet and ankle bones. Uh huh. His feet and ankle bones. Receive strength. Receive strength. So he leaping up. And he leaped, leaping up. Stood. Stood. And walked. And walked. And entered the temple. And entered with them into the temple. Walking. Walking. Leaping. Leaping. And praising God. And praising God. Now. How do you know this was a special anointing? Because Peter and John did not leave home with something in their mind that this was going to happen. And this man was asking for alms. Now, if they could have had money, that special anointing wouldn't have been needed because they'd have dropped something in the cup. Sometimes God have us without for a reason so that he can, we can show his glory. And so when the man asked on, um, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give, un give I unto thee. So he said to the man, rise up, get up and walk. Well, you know, the man probably thought, so now you know he, something got to be wrong with him. The reason I'm here begging, I can't walk. So that's the reason I'm here. And so Peter then takes the man to look on us. So and the man looked on them expecting. That's the first thing he said, look on us. And the man looked expecting for him to drop something in the cup. But Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? So now it looked like Peter made him happy and then made him sad when he said he didn't have nothing to put in the cup. But he said, such as I have, give I unto thee. And he took him by the hand and he lifted him up. And the man got up jumping and shouting and went into the temple. Now, that's where I got the message from that these are three things that a person needs. They need a word. Look on us. They need a word and they need a touch. And they need a look. He said, look on us. And the word was, silver and gold have I not. Then they need a touch. He took him by the hand and they leaped up. All right, now here's another example. This was a special anointed. It wasn't that Peter and them was, was, was ready to uh, heal a, a man that was lame, but this is what God gave him. Now let's look at Acts chapter 19. And verse 11. Acts chapter 19 and verse 11. And God wrought special miracles. miracles. Y'all see the word special? God worked special miracles. What did he do? By the hands of Paul. By the hands of Paul. So that from his body. From his body. Were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. He took aprons. Uh-huh. And handkerchiefs and, and aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the disease departed from them. And the now, evil spirit went out of them. And the evil spirit went out of them. Now that was a special anointing. A special anointing that God gave him that the people, he took aprons and prayed for them and handkerchiefs and the aprons and handkerchiefs that he gave the people back, the devil went out of them and they was healed. That's a special anointing. You know, and that's why we give prayer calls. That's where we got the prayer calls from, is that we would pray for them. So we believe that God did it, and we know that he did it. So we said, God, you did it for Paul. You do it for us. But now, just, you know, you, you're walking around, somebody come up and sick. You don't have that, unless God give you that special anointing. You don't have the power just to, well, to take this handkerchief and get healed. That's not what it was talking about. And so sometimes people, you know, they, they, as a matter of fact, there's people that sell handkerchiefs. They sell you water sell you oil. Those were things that were not for to be sold. Matter of fact, I've seen some, uh, uh, you know, I'm not down in the store. They're just doing business. But I've seen them had a little bottle of oil like that and they were selling it for 250 
I was saying, I give mine away for nothing, and they're bigger than what you're selling for two fifty. And I, you know, dude, I don't know who blessed them. I don't. I don't know whether it's blessed or not. But there's a way you bless all, and you just don't take all and say it's blessed. And I'm not saying the all was not blessed, but if you're going to pray for all the blessed, y'all, you listen to me, sisters and brothers. If you go to somebody's house and you're going to bless the oil and bless their family, you got to pray. The first thing you're going to say is to God, change the natural purpose of this oil. Because the natural purpose of olive oil was for cooking. Is that right? For cooking. And so then you don't want to bless the, the house for folks to be cooking. Change the purpose. From a natural purpose to a spiritual purpose. For casting out demons, healing the sick, all manner of diseases. And God for put it on the on the on the door post. God that to keep out the devil. When you're blessing the house, put it on the window. Put it on the top of the window. Don't go in smearing on their window pane because you're gonna get in trouble. Put it at the top, just a little. Don't try to put it up there where they can see it. Because if it's blessed, it just take a little dab. It's better than brill cream. Alright? So you, you, you do that and you learn and you bless it. You bless all the entryways that are, you can see. Now the devil don't, is, it does not mean the devil coming in through the door, but what you want to do, the last place you're going to bless, you're going to bless them, put the oil on them because that's where the devil coming through. <laughs> all right, I'm trying to help somebody. That's where he's coming through, so you bless them. So the side track is you blessing the windows, they're putting it over the doorposts and everybody, but make sure you put some on their head before you leave. Everyone in there. Okay, <clears throat> didn't get no amens on that. Because that's where the devil come through, people. Now, those were special events, special anointing. Now, the question is asked, the, the, this special anointing that we are experiencing. Now, is there a time or do we really need the anointing of God to do our work? Do we need the anointing of God? We need the anointing of God because it's God helping us. And when we say God help us, that's what we're asking for what? The anointing. We're asking for him to send the Holy Spirit to help us or to aid us in this specific task. And God will do that when you are standing on his word. Now, here's another thing that, that we need, why we need this special anointing. Peter and John went down to Samaria. The people already were saved. They had gotten saved through Philip. Do y'all remember reading that? Yes. So somebody get that, Acts chapter 8. They were already saved, but they had not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, I want you to look at this. They had not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, they, didn't, they had the Holy Spirit for the new birth, but they had not been baptized. And then when you baptize with the Holy Spirit, he said it'll, it'll cause your flesh to quicken. He will quicken your mortal, mortal body. body. Mm -hmm. And so... Peter and them, I mean, Philip had preached to them, and the whole city got saved. But they had not received the Holy Ghost. Now, then the two specialists came in. Peter and, and who came in? Peter and John. They came in. And when they came down and, 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 and to, to there, then what the first thing they did? They called them, said, listen, yeah, we, we've preached to them. They have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what verse is that? About verse 20-something uh, where Peter and them laid hand on them. And then the Holy Ghost came on him, and this uh, Simon was upset about that, going to offer them money because he had the whole city bewitched. Well, eight, Who have that? Read it. 18. 17, 18. 17, 18, yes. Then laid they their hands on them. They laid their hands on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. And they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that. And when group, Simon saw that, Simon, that, <laughs> that, 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 that witch, when he saw that. That through laying on. Of hands of by the, the laying on of hands, the Holy Ghost was given. The Holy Ghost were given. He offered them money. He offered them money, saying, "Give me also this power." Give me this power. He was used to spoke buying stuff to mm -hmm. bewitch folks, mm -hmm. and he thought he could buy the Holy Ghost. What did Peter say? That on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So that when I lay my hand on somebody, they will receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him. Peter said unto him, "Thy money perish with your thee. Your money perish with you." Because thou hast thought that the gift you of God thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Could be purchased with money. So you cannot buy the Holy Ghost. That's why God help me preach you a minute. I don't want to preach. I just want to help somebody. That's why you cannot buy a person tape, cannot buy a book, and preach like them. 
because if it wasn't given to you, you can use the examples of what you read out of there, but you don't try to modify it where you think you're them. Because the Holy Ghost may not be on you, he didn't give it to you. And you're trying to just, all you're doing is mimicking somebody. But you want the Holy Ghost to acknowledge, anoint you so that he can give you. He would anoint you. He would come on you. Yeah. If you've ever been born again and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will get the anointing when you get up. You will get the anointing when you get up. I remember the first message that I preached. And Ella William, I had never, I had the Holy Ghost, but I had never received, refilled, filled, filled that, that, that a special anointing. And I didn't know what I was doing. You know, you're, I was afraid. And, and, and it was a, we was at the small church. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, now when the first people preached their first message, all their brothers and uncles and cousins came out. Did nobody come out? <laughs> Same folk came out to hear me. They, they, they just was listening because they loved me. But I preached about have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That was my first sermon. And I, as I was talking that, the Holy Ghost came on me. And man, I'm, you talking about somebody preaching? And but just like, that, that was the, God was saying, showing the people that he had called me. Because see, then when you go up and tell the, your, your, your pastor, say, the Lord called me to preach. He said, okay, son. They, you know, said, okay, we're going to put you out there. No, they didn't do that. You know what he told me? He said, you go back. He said, see me three months. So how do you know he called you? I said, I know he called me. He said, how do you know? I said, I don't know. He said, well, come back three months and see me. Three months was up, I came back and said, the Lord called me to preach. He said, how do you know? I said, I know he did, Elder Stevens. He called me to preach, and if you give me an opportunity, I'll show you. I'm scared then anyway, but I'm talking. That was a special anointing. <laughs> that was a special anointing for me to say that. And I didn't even know how it came out, but it came out. So he set the time for me to preach. And when I was preaching, Elder Robbins, the Lord anointed me. My wife was there. She, he anointed me, and my God. And not only that the anointing was on me that night, but when I went to bed, it was still on me. All that next day, it was still on me. It was there, my God. And you know, if the anointing, don't, if you can't preach to yourself, and you can't preach yourself happy, don't try to preach nobody else happy. If it don't help you, don't try to tell me about it. Lord Jesus. So, Simon thought he could buy this, and Peter told him his money perished with him. So we need the anointing to help us in our daily business, in our thing that we do. We need that. And how do we keep the anointing? How do we keep it? St. John 15 and 5. This is how you keep the anointing. St. John 15 and 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. He that abideth in me. And I in him. And I in him. The same bringeth forth much your fruit. Your same bring forth much fruit. For without me. But without me. You can do nothing. You can do nothing. Do you see that? You can't do nothing without God. You got to abide in him. And you got to abide in him. And you got to know it. And you got to know that there are some people gifted and they can preach in tongue. And you know that that's God. And they can preach and they use it. And you know it's God. A good example of that, we got it right in here with us with Sister White. We know that. I know that it's God. I know God. So and, and I, I know the voice of God. And I know that when God is using her, she, you know, so she don't have to ask me. But now if God was not using her, I would have told her. But I know God is using her. In a, and let me tell you something. That's what God wants. He wants all of us to work in our gifts. That's right. Don't be afraid to work in your gift. Now, if, if, if the Bible said that the prophet is, the spirit is subject to the prophet. So I have a gift that I know whether it's the Holy Ghost or not. And I'm not going to embarrass you if it's not. But I'm going to take, take you in the office and tell you that wasn't God. That, you know, I'm not going to stop you in the public unless you just, you're just going on and on and messing up everything. Oh, Jesus. Is anybody in here anointed? <laughs> because, because that's the thing. You can't, you, you'll know that. I mean, I've seen preachers. I've seen missionaries. They just make them up and anointed. Make it up. They know exactly when they're going to do it. No, how do you know they know it exactly? I've heard preachers preach, and if you go with them somewhere else or you see them in another place, they preach that same sermon, and when they get to a certain mark, they do the same thing again. It's just like car, just, you know, here's up. And 
but abide in God. And if you abide in him, he will abide in you. Now, the anointing is necessary for speaking in tongues. It is. You can't speak in tongues without the Holy Ghost. You can't. Because the Holy Ghost, the, the tongue is the sign that you've been filled. And if you've not been filled and you're speaking in a tongue, it's unknown to everybody, including yourself. Because only the devil can interpret his tongues and only God can interpret his tongue. Huh? And so that's, you know, when people tell you to say ba ba ba, who, 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 about a Honda, don't say that. Because we're interpreting a car. No, I, I'm trying to help. No, the, the truth is, this is the truth. God knows it's the truth when we was, we was on Orange and we first were down there. Ella William, this lady for, the, <laughs> you know, when we were clapping over folks, and this lady, for 30 minutes, we were clapping over, and she was like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, Boy, we thought, I said, get it, you going to get it, come on. And when, 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 she, <laughs> when, when everything was over, and she was on her way out, and we said to her, I said to her, I said, well, how do you feel? She said, how about that, huh, no, no, no. <laughs> I said, God, my God, we've been, we done sweated and everything over. And she said, how about that, huh, no, no, no. I said, my God. I just had to start pastoring. We were sweating. So Scott might can remember those days. <laughs> sweating over this lady. Pat, come on, say thank you, Jesus. This lady, ha na na, ha na na, ha na na na, ha na na. We come on, come on. And she <laughs> devil will wear you out. The same thing, this is, oh God, I'm going to help you so. The same thing can happen when you're trying to cast out a demon and you don't have the power to cast them out. You just kind of pray for them and tell them that you're going to cast the demon out. Leave them alone if you ain't got no power because you ain't going to cast them out. You're just wasting time. The devil will wear you out. I remember I had some people that worked with, <laughs> worked with this lady to get this devil out of us. So y'all worked with it. It was an hour. And they, they sweating and the lady sitting down there. And they, the devil ain't with nowhere. They drenching with sweat and everything. Out. Come on out. The devil wasn't thinking about them because he didn't have no power to cast the devil out. The devil ain't going nowhere. The devil will tell you when you, the devil know when you ain't got no anointing. 19, 18 chapter of Acts. 18 chapter of Acts. Somebody get it. The son of Scoover. They tried to cast out the devil. Chapter 18, I believe it is, of Acts. Which verse? The son of Sceva. The devil told him what? I know Paul. Anybody got it? Acts 18? 18 and what, Pastor? Is it 19? 19. 19? 19. 19. All right, 19 chapter of Acts. What verse, Elder And there were seven sons, one of Sceva, of the, one Sceva. Uh-huh, there were seven sons. Of one Sceva. Uh-huh, the sons a of Sceva. Jew. Yes. And chief of the priests, which did so. Uh-huh. And the evil spirit answered and said. Yes. Jesus I know. Jesus I know. And Paul I know. That's what the devil told him. Say, I know Jesus and, and I know Paul. But who are you? But who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was. The man in whom the evil spirit were. Leaped on them. He leaped on them. And overcame them. And overcame them. And prevailed against them. And prevailed against them. So that they fled out of that house. They fled out of that house. Naked and wounded. Naked and wounded. The devil whooped their clothes off of them. So you can't be playing with demons. So if you don't have the power to cast them out, don't try to make yourself look great. Leave them alone. Go on about your business. The, the devil will tell you, I ain't bothering you. You better leave me alone. Now, and, 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 and let me tell you about this special anointing. I don't know if it was uh, Kathy and them there at the end, but I know my wife remember this. And I was praying for the sick, Ella Robbins. Now, and, and the Lord was blessing. That was when we first over there on, on, on um, Orange. And this lady was in line. And just before she got to me, this lady changed into a devil. I said, she changed in a, is that true, Betty? This Betty was standing there, the woman changed, and a voice began, it, everything looked like her hands, some claw, claws came out of her fingernail. And she came at me, ah! and all 
I could do it. I met her. I didn't run. I went towards her and hit her, popped her side of the head like that. She met my hand. And when she met my hand, the woman went up in the air and fell out, kicking, hollering, streaming for God. But that's what the special anointing do. That's what the special anointing do. But I've seen it on the opposite way. I've seen people try to cast out a demon like they did in the sons of school. I've seen them try to cast out a demon. And it was a, a person was preaching. <laughs> this, this, guy, this guy was preaching. He was, he claimed, he claimed he was so anointed that he was jumping up. <laughs> this guy was jumping up at least four feet. And he was talking about casting out demons. This was a guy that, this guy was a, a, a what do you call it, schizophrenic. He would be nice, and all of a sudden, he was a boxer, bipolar. bipolar. And all of a sudden, he'd go, he'd go crazy, and he started hitting you and doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this guy was preaching. <laughs> this man was jumping, jumping up, preaching, talking about what he going to do. And the guy got himself tired of you. He said, I'm tired of you. He got up. Man, that guy was running. <laughs> you talking about jumping up high. That man was running like an uh, animal. <laughs> Get away from this man. Now, if you're going to cast out demons, you can't do it. Leave him alone. If you don't got the power to do it, leave him alone. This man talking about casting out demons. <laughs> when that demon got up, man, coming at him, so I'm, so I'm sick of you talking. <laughs> man, that guy was running all around. And then when we, got, when we got up and prayed for him and the Lord knocked him down, another man went on top and then he going to run over there. <laughs> Running all around. Get up, man. Get out of here. You ain't got no anointing. <laughs> so that's what you have to look at. God will do what he promised he would do. Yes, he will. But we need more anointed people. What would happen if everybody in here came in with the same anointing? Yeah. What would happen? No devil could stand before us. They couldn't stand before us. And it takes the anointing to cast out demons. And it takes the anointing to pray for the sick. You can't pray for the sick without the anointing. And let me tell you something. A many a time, if you, if you are really anointed, if you really are anointed, you will feel the pain that the other folks have. And, and what the anointing will teach you is that when you pray for them, you know when the pain leaves them because you feel it. And it doesn't leave you when it leaves them all the time. Sometimes I've been, I went home and I still had the pains of other people. But I would sit down. I got my place that I sit down and I have to get them out of me. But you got to do that. If you, and that's why it takes the anointing of God to break the yoke. And if you ever cast out one devil, every devil in the universe know you. And they're coming after you. And so you need the anointing to work what God wants you to work. So... God, the anointing is necessary for speaking in tongues in Acts 2 and 4, in 1 Corinthians 12, and 2 Corinthians. That's what the anointing is for. And so the tongues help us. And we also can pray in the Spirit. Now, when you pray in the Spirit, there are some, there are a prayer that the God give you 